Clinton Woods, light heavyweight champion of the world, but the Sheffield man has one thing to prove. More than any other fight, it's the fight I wanted. Why? Because he beat me. Jamaica's Glenn Johnson, the road warrior, former world champion, now he wants his crown back. If world champion mean you win fights, there wouldn't be no new world champion, right? Bottom line is, the better skills win. They fought twice before. The first, a draw. Johnson says he was robbed. The second time saw the Englishman beaten fair and square. Last time I don't think I was ready for him. This time I can't allow that to happen. Now it's time for Clinton Woods to prove he is the real world champ and finally take Johnson down. Also Well, more than any other fight, it's a fight I wanted. Why? Because he beat me. I'm bringing serious pain, and it all depends on how long he can take that pain. The world champion. Sheffield's ordinary homeboy. The challenger. Who's beaten Jones, Tarver, and Father Time. It's their third world title fight. Familiarity has bred a healthy contempt. Blink off Johnson's not box Clinton Woods. He's box somebody who look like him, vaguely. Will, will the real Clinton please stand up? <laughs> the champion's muscled up, but it's hard to judge if he's ready to finally beat his nemesis. Training's been done behind firmly closed doors. What a contrast to Mr. Access All Areas. Hey, how are you guys? How is everything? We had a great training camp. I'm trying to keep it up. Mm. Old guy trying to stay young. <laughs> We're looking forward to the second and um, taking care of Woods. Johnson's so relaxed he was at Tesco's four days before the fight, sitting on the tarmac while his team stocked up. Uh, ready to go. Ready it's to called go. anger ah. management. No secrets, nothing to hide. Let's come in to get him. Wood's secrecy is understandable. If he looks haunted, he is. You just see Johnson when I'm training in the gym. Uh, mind's always on him. I've got, I've got to hurt him now. Uh, I just want to get past that demon now. This has been the hardest part of the preparation. Watching Johnson batter him two years ago. I never watched a fight up till last week. He started getting nervous now. Watch it, tell you the truth. He's, he's quite slick with stuff what he does. I just look so sloppy. I don't look strong. I, I knew I'd lost. I knew I'd lost. I know for certain that I've got the, the tools to beat him this time. Time! If it's a different Clinton Woods, you're going to meet the same Glenn Johnson. And let's see how him deal with it. What is it, the twin brother this time? They say Joe Calzaghe awaits the winner. So does a new level of respect. That's the real motivation. The one thing these two agree on. And I believe to beat Johnson, I reckon that should be me number one in like every week. Bottom line is, the better skills win. It'll be me over cheering like that, and it'll be him over in corner. Ladies and gentlemen, making his entrance into the building, the challenger from Miami, Florida, USA, Glenn Johnson. There is Glenn Johnson. He has exuded confidence all week in the build-up to this fight. And he believes with utter certainty that he has got the number of the current champion, Clinton Woods. Perhaps a big question, will Father Time at last catch up on him, or will he be able to reach back and find the form that saw him knock out Roy Jones, beat Antonio Tava, and perhaps most crucially, to have beaten Clinton Woods. His trainer, Orlando Cuella, who's just behind him, said to me this week, he is in as good a physical shape as he has ever been in. Well, that's his maybe. I suppose he's got to say that. But the crowd know 
and above all, Clinton Woods knows that this man has fought so many times in opposition territory and produced the goods. And until Clinton Woods has got past Glenn Johnson, he knows in his own mind that he cannot, I don't think, truly say that he is the best light heavyweight in the world. He won in Sheffield. Is he going to be able to do it here in Bolton? behind the scenes in the run-up to this of course the antipathy between Frank Warren and Clinton Woods promoter Dennis Hobson continuing right the way into this evening a row over which dressing room Woods should be in Johnson meantime completely cool and calm and collected and now making his entrance to the ring from Sheffield the champion Clinton Woods! The strains of land of hope and glory, there's the IBF champion's belt, and there is Clinton Woods, this unsung, almost unheralded champion from Sheffield. Boxing hasn't really dealt in too many favours, he's come up the hard way, but here he is, and there's Ricky Hatton carrying the belt in, working in Woods corner tonight and if Woods can win this one he says that to a national television audience and to the thousands here in Bolton he will have proved what he's been striving for throughout his career that he is indeed the world number one Woods who stands six foot two big tall impressive figure will this be his night he believes it is his destiny he's looked a little bit edgy this week now though he has to deliver he has to produce somehow the performance of his life well you judge for yourself who looks relaxed who looks tense Woods to me looks better in there than he has done all week perhaps now at last that he's in the ring he knows that it is his moment Dennis Hobson his manager and promoter alongside him and now once again we rejoin Michael Pass our master of ceremonies ladies and gentlemen Frank Warren in association with Seminole Warriors Boxing proudly presents sponsored by the news of the world big on boxing Reebok Frank Warren dot TV live and exclusive on ITV one 12 three minute rounds of boxing for the IBF light heavyweight championship of the world the three scoring judges at ringside for this assignment are Richard Bays from the USA Roberto Ramirez from Puerto Rico and Mickey Van from England IBF supervisor at ringside Daryl Peoples British Boxing Board of Control steward in charge Charles Giles Finally, when the action commences, the star referee in charge of the action this evening, taking part in his 22nd world title contest, Mr. Howard Foster from Ma Doncaster. And so, people of Bolton, this is the Big Fight Live! <laughs> Introducing to you firstly, the challenger this evening, boxing out of the blue corner, wearing the blue color shorts trimmed with white. At the weigh-in yesterday, he scaled 12 stones, four pounds. He has an excellent record consisting of 56 contests, 44 wins, 29 of those wins coming by way of knockout, 10 defeats and two draws. Coming to the ring this evening as the former undefeated IBF light heavyweight champion of the world, and is the number one mandatory challenges this evening presenting from Miami, Florida Glenn the Road Warrior Johnson and opposing him boxing out of the red corner wearing the blue color shorts trim with red and silver 
at the weigh-in yesterday, he scaled on the championship limit 12 stone, 7 pounds exactly. He also has an outstanding record consisting of 43 contests, 39 wins. 24 of those wins coming by way of knockout, only three defeats and one draw. Tonight, he makes the third defense of his championship, presenting the IBM Black Heavyweight Champion of the World from the steel city of Sheffield, Clinton Wood. Timekeeper at the bell, Barry Pender, and the referee with his final instructions, Mr. Howard Foster. 12 3 minute round. I spoke to you both in the dressing room, you both know what I expect. You keep it clean, break straight away when told, and both of you watch your heads. Good luck to you both, touch gloves. Good luck, lads. Well, what a terrific reception it was for Clinton Woods. While those introductions were going on, Woods was stretching in his corner, punching the corner post, and was he looking stressed? Duke McKenzie, alongside me, thought that that may be the case. Johnson. 37 years Second old, three years the older man, looks cool and calm and he often starts his fights very, very quickly. Who's going to be the first one to take control in this opening period? Woods, we're told, and we've seen in his two defences since he won the vacant title from Rico Hoy, has improved as an inside fighter. He's got that reach advantage and he needs to establish that long left-hand lead. It's so important that Woods gets off to a good start, John, as you've already said. Means to really just take the fight to Johnson. Has to meet fire with fire. Cannot allow Johnson to settle into a rhythm. It's incredibly warm in this arena tonight. I think that favours Johnson. Howard Foster, the Doncaster referee. A no-nonsense sort of type. He won't stand for too much messing in there. Johnson trying to tuck up behind high-held guard. And that's good work from Woods leading off behind that left hand lead and turning the left hand expertly into the head and trying to switch attack to the body and catching Johnson as he comes inside Johnson responding with a couple of decent looking left hands of his own the body shot in there from Johnson and he's trying to put Woods onto the back foot straight away in this opening period See, Johnson was just trying he's trying to hurt Kenton Woods with everything that he throws there's a lot of meaningful power in the shots it just Kenton Woods needs to put distance between him Fiddler mess him around, but it's a good start from the challenger. Here comes Johnson, and it's that right hand, left hook into the body, bringing down the gloves, and the right hand is the danger shot. That's the one which gave Woods so much trouble in the first in, and the second fight, particularly the second. That's a decent shot on the break from Woods, but the better of the early exchanges coming from the challenger, Glenn Johnson. Yeah, Johnson's an incredibly good, good jab. He's an incredibly good body puncher. Watch him go to work when he starts the assault to the body. He goes straight to the body, goes straight back to the head. I wonder if already Woods is beginning to have flashbacks to previous fights because the weight of power, the authority at the moment in the opening couple of minutes coming from the challenger, the older man from Jamaica, Glenn Johnson. Sorry, John. But I just feel that Woods is getting involved much too early. He's gone straight at Johnson. It's not the right tactic. Johnson said, if he's going to try and knock me out, as Woods said, if he's going to try and do that, then that is playing right into my hands. And if he tries to do that, I will stop him. Good solid jab again from Johnson. That's better from Woods coming in with that left uppercut and then getting the gloves back up. But that's a terrific jab again from Johnson. See, the taller guy in Woods should not be getting out jabbed by Johnson. He's got about a good three or four inches in height and probably in reach. He just needs to keep him at the end of that jab. That's easier said than done. Promised to be a fascinating clash of styles, as it has been in the previous contest between these two. Johnson, for me, has started the better in this opening round. The Johnson corner are pretty happy with the way this has gone. They regard that as three minutes work, well done. Second of 12 rounds as usual for the championship distance. And Clinton Woods needs now to establish his authority on this fight. The crowd sense that and try and rouse the Sheffield man. 
Well, there's more urgency now from Woods with the jab, as he needs to do, needs to really sink it in. Good body shot from Johnson, and, well, now, the referee's saying that was low, I think, and Johnson responded all straight away, and Woods momentarily turned his head. Well, that was an interesting exchange. Well, Woods will have to fight the fight of his life. Forget what he's done previously against Ricardo Hoy and, and Delesley. He's going to have to fight the fight of his life to beat this guy because this guy brings so much more to the table. Woods with two successful defences since winning this title. Julio Cesar Gonzalez. It's a good right hand from Woods and a good body shot. And a buzz of acclaim from the crowd that Johnson takes it well. That's another good left hand from Woods. And the Woods corner are encouraged by that. Best little spell from Clinton Woods in this fight so far in the second round. Turning Johnson well there. But that right hand is the danger shot from Johnson. Woods has a tendency to throw the left and then admire it. And when he does so, Johnson comes back with that right over the top, just like that. The right hand is a snappy shot from Johnson. As you said before, Johnny's getting nice and close to land the shot. He puts a jab to the body and then comes back over the top with the right hand. But it's a good round for Clinton Woods at the moment because he's using one or two dirty tactics. The elbow's gone in once or twice. He's pulled Johnson's head down once or twice. And these are the things that will upset, the, upset Johnson. Well, as they say, it's not a tea party in there. Ricky Hatton in the corner, right in front of us, bellowing his, uh, he's bellowing his instructions to Clinton Woods, and Ricky knows as well as anybody about the necessity to really turn it into a war in there when it counts. There was one which went in low from both men there, I think, and the referee allows them to get away with it. Woods trying to work away inside. That's a solid right hand from Johnson. Good right hand. Fantastic shot there, overhand right, as you've already stated, John from Johnson. But he needs to, if Johnson needs to put the combinations together, one shot's not going to get Clinton Woods. Oh, good jab there from Johnson. Clinton Woods should not be getting hit with jabs from the smaller guy. Johnson's been training for this behind closed doors. The Johnson camp reckon that shows that he's running scared. Woods says he just didn't want to show anything. Well, here in the second round. Woods is trying to impose his authority in the closing stages and Woods is finishing it strong maybe catching the judge's eye that's a good shot from Woods chopping right hand in the last few seconds of the second round Clinton Woods is right back into this fight I gave him that round do you, do you agree? I certainly do John started the round quite well finished the round quite well that chopping right hand for me in the closing stages of the second enough to just edge it Clinton Woods way so I've got it one round each it's turning out to be the cracker that we suspected that it might be so well matched these two fighters and both boxers are putting everything into every punch they're not wasting nothing they're not holding back on anything at all the jabs are heavy the right hands and the hooks are all heavy from both boxers Woods says physically he's a stronger man, a better man, that against Glenn Johnson the first two times it wasn't the real Clinton Woods and anybody who really knows boxing knows that. This time no stone left unturned and Woods is trying to use that conditioning and that strength to match fire with fire against a man who over the years has been shown to be a terrifically strong fighter. Is there a little bit of reddening around the left eye of Glenn Johnson? It looks to me as though there's a slight mouse, a slight swelling around the left eye of Johnson maybe just a touch he has a, a battle scarred face anyway that's a good body shot dug in by Woods terrific right hand and look at him opening up with the left hook as well I tell you what Woods has landed a smashing right hand and a left hook in this round and he really fancies it he's looking in Johnson's eyes to see what sort of damage he's inflicted and he's trying to press home that advantage this is the best spell of the fight so far for Woods Johnson trying to respond fire with fire Good body shot from Johnson, thundered home. But Johnson just wants to lean on and take a little bit of a breather for a second or two there. And that's a good sign for Woods. And again, right in front of me, Ricky Hatton drums the side of the ring apron here and applauds Woods. And Woods is marked around the right eye as well. No surprise here, both these fighters cannot surely maintain this intensity of conflict for the full 12 rounds. John, I don't think this one's going to go the distance. Somebody's going to go. Somebody's definitely going to go. Maybe not this round, but they
they cannot fight like this for 12 rounds. It's a fantastic round for, 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 for Woods. He's, he's adopted the uppercut in this round and it's worked an absolute treat for him. He's working well inside, short, straight punches, but back comes Johnson. He's so committed and that right hook again damaging, throwing the left hook as well to the body. Well, this is outstanding championship boxing. It's, it's action-packed, sorry Johnny, it is an action-packed round. And I would be inclined to give Woods this round, he's worked incredibly hard. Let me remind you, you can watch the best of the action again on the ITV Boxing website, itv.com slash boxing, video highlights, and this one will certainly be worth watching again. Closing seconds of the third round, and it's been a good round for Clinton Woods, and for me that puts him ahead at the moment in this fight. Big round for the Sheffield champion, who's fought with authority and composure. That Woods corner, trainer Richard Poxon there, they're going to be very happy with the way in which the last couple of rounds have gone after a typically fast start from Glenn Johnson. We go now into the fourth round. Woods, arguably one of the most underrated fighters in world boxing, and here aiming to make a statement. And if he wins, maybe Joe Calzaghe, maybe Roy Jones, the man who beat him in Portland, Oregon back in 2002. On that occasion, I was over there for that one. I don't think that Clinton Woods really believed that he could beat Jones. Here, perhaps, he has it in his head and now in his heart that he can do this man from Jamaica, Glenn Johnson. Well, he's boxing, he's changed his tactics ever so slightly in this round, John. He's trying to put more distance between him and Johnson. That, round, that last round took a hell of a lot out of Clinton Woods. Yep, he certainly did. He gambled. Grueling sort of contest this one, and the pace just dropping slightly in this fourth round. Clubbing right hand from Johnson. Woods doesn't want to be taking those, and he's taken two solid ones there, and a good left hook. Rocked back the head of Woods. Yeah, that shot would have hurt. It was a clipping short hook on the inside there from Johnson. Woods just adopting to stay on the ropes and just try and suck him in if he can but it's not the right tactic should get off there now the body shots are getting through from Johnson Woods doesn't like it downstairs good left hook again from Johnson he's trying to create the opening for the right over the top and there's another chopping right hand went in there that right over the top across the shoulder of Woods Woods covering up well though inside and fighting perhaps more effectively inside than he did in the first two occasions against Johnson Keep stopping the same shot from Johnson over the right hand, the single right hand. But Woods has had a lot of success with his uppercut and he's bloodied the inside mouth of, of Johnson. Clinton Woods, such a likeable fella, says that he really only took up professional boxing to get rid of his beer guts. He said he was forget fed up of getting in trouble fighting on the streets of Chesterfield and in South Yorkshire. And uh, then when he finally adopted the professional game, got in there, lost his Commonwealth title against David Starry and decided, yep, I could actually make something of this. And here he's trying to really prove the ultimate point. As forward comes Glenn Johnson, this battle-hardened, gnarled veteran who is not taking a backward step and lands another big right hand and a left hook as well. Oh, this really is punch for punch. It's becoming a war of attrition from both boxers. They're going to have to dig deep as early as this round. Amir Khan's family on the far side of the ring there. Let me remind you that Amir Khan is coming up in action later on on ITV1 after this IBF light heavyweight title fight. And Johnson, after having a rocky couple of rounds, the second and the third, is doing better in this form. More hurtful right hands towards the head of Clinton Woods. The message to Glenn Johnson is that you've got to hustle him. You can't allow the pace to drop. He won the last round. They paid attention to that swelling around just underneath the left eye. Nothing serious there. And this fight, as we suspected, is right in the balance once again. How do you score it, Duke, at this stage? Yeah, I've got Woods winning the... Sorry, uh, Johnson winning the first, Woods the second. They got it pretty even in the third. But Johnson coming in and winning the, winning the fourth. So not too much between them. And the action continues in this fifth round.
as we've seen so far, and compromising, tough and hard. And Johnson fighting as he always does, as the aggressor that John Woods lands a good body shot in reverse, but the greater volume of punches there coming from Glenn Johnson. See, what they said to Johnson in the corner was to stop trying to knock the guy out with one shot, work on the combinations, put the punches together, and that's what will get him out of there. But Woods takes a good shot, just sagging on the ropes there, needs to tie him up, spin him round, find the centre of the ring. He does take a good shot. Remember Ull Clement, Ull Clementson, the Norwegian a few years ago, had him down. Jason Delisle as well in the first round had him down, but on both occasions he got up and won that. That's a good right hand from Woods. Johnson takes it well, but amid that barrage of right hands from Johnson, Woods came back with a really good solid right hook of his own. Key phase, you sense, in this fight, and I've said it before, but you just get the feeling now, as we're in the fifth round, that a big attack of either man might prove to be a key to this fight. There's one there low on the blind side of the referee from Woods. Unintentional, he didn't quite bend his legs to get the body shot through. However, Woods is all into the middle of there. He needs to tighten up his defence. He needs to tighten up and, and start and spoil Johnson's work on the inside. He's giving him free range, John. He needs to tighten him up. The only man who has ever stopped Glenn Johnson was Bernard Hopkins. A few years back in a world middleweight title fight. Hopkins, a terrific warrior who went and produced that phenomenal performance in beating Antonio Tarver earlier this year in what may well prove to be his final fight. And back comes Johnson again. Well, I tell you what, you could take 30 seconds from any stage of this fight and absolutely bookmark it and show it as just what a hard, demanding sport boxing can be. This has been uncompromising action from the word go. Well, this is what Vin Woods has to really suck it up now, John. He needs to find a new lease of life. He needs to try and find something to stop Johnson in his tracks. He needs to stop trying to knock him out. He needs to get the jab working again. I just get this feeling, I just get a feeling that Clinton Woods has gone a bit right hand happy. He's landed a couple of solid right hands which have connected with Johnson, but he's not boxing his way in. He's looking for that bingo punch, landing the big right hand, and it may not be the way. Woods corner think that their man is still right in here there, and they're absolutely right on the opposite side during that break Glenn Johnson being implored to show that he is the warrior let's hear you grunt while you throw the punches Orlando Cuellar his trainer is quite an orator maybe we'll get a chance to hear some of his words between the next two rounds well Johnson's got the experience obviously now I've known he's beaten some of the best light heavyweights in the world Roy Jones, Antonio Tarver, two, you know, six foot plus guys. So, you know, Wood shouldn't really pose too many problems for him. However, though, Woods is fighting such a game fight. He's just not allowing Johnson to have it, obviously, his own way. He's jabbing, he's jabbing. Oh, good right hand. Good right hand from Johnson. And that one shook Woods. He's taken it and taken it well, but it really thudded into the side of Woods' head. Best punch Johnson's thrown for some time and responds with a solid looking left hand as well. He is one very, very fit man for 37. He's an incredible, he is a throwback, John. There aren't too many like him, you know. Obviously, Bernard Hopkins is one. He's like a 40-year-old world champion. And, you know, this guy fits into that same category. He's a throwback fighter. He's made of, like, teak wood. He's just rock hard. But Woods needs to try and get the combinations going because he's letting this round just slip away from him. Just leaning on and not doing enough at the moment, Clinton Woods. He needs to start putting his punches together in clusters. The one big shot, I don't think, is going to move Glenn Johnson. And it's, of course, down to the judges, but Duke and I, at this stage, have just about got wood shading it, although there's not a lot in it. Grueling fight. Both of them having to dig deep. Woods arm punching right over the top from Johnson was the more hurtful shot and you saw it heard him grunt from our ringside microphone there as he tried to tee off with that one another overhand right from Johnson now Woods seems to have gone into a bit of a show because he stopped a lot of shots in this round 
He's standing around to make it competitive, but he's not winning the round. It's Johnson who's landing the much heavier shots, and he's just slightly outworking him. Sometimes, of course, judging can go with the hometown fighter. You get the roar of the crowd, and whenever Woods throws and lands, you get the buzz of acclaim. When Johnson throws and lands, maybe the only people who are reacting are his own corner man. Look at that right in there in each other's faces both of them trying to tee off with humdinging hooks to the body it's a good round for, for, for Johnson though the challenger he really is he's managed to back Clinton Woods up nullify his, his biggest punches which are the uppercuts and the right hands they're starting to get tired Johnson's trying to sap it out of Woods I think by using his renowned physical strength to try and bully Woods back onto the ropes there is so little between these two men. Yeah, they're both tired, John. Both desperately tired. Could be another round that one, though, for Glenn Johnson. I don't know. It was a close round. Let's see what they make of it in the woods corner. Just floating yet? You're not flowing. And here's that right hand from Johnson over the top. Hurtful shot that one. Take a look at it from another angle, Duke. Good shot. It was a good shot because he's created the angle, John. He's throwing the right hand and he just slightly, slightly steps off to the right and then drops the shot. So he's not hitting him from a square on stance. Most of the real power shots there came from the challenger, Glenn Johnson. Got to go and take it to him now. This round, how fit and strong do you feel? Take it to him this round. Go and get him and bully him and push him back and then work your hands over on inside. Let's see just cool. how strong he is. Yeah? Make sure you keep that shape. Give you this nice deep breath. <laughs> Come on, do it. Come get your head on him now. Come and grab all this shit and don't let him go. It comes faster. So there's Duke McKenzie's scorecard. He's got Glenn Johnson ahead. Into the second half of the fight. Woods needs to step it up. Well, nice hook, nice right hand from Woods. He just needs to keep this going now. He needs a big round. You know, for his own sort of mental state of mind, he needs a big round just to get himself back into the fight, you know, get back in the game. I think, Woods, I think Johnson made a big effort in that sixth round. And he started this seventh a little bit laboured. 30 seconds gone and he's not thrown a meaningful punch so far in this round. And that's a good uppercut from Woods. Good shot. And is Johnson for the moment showing the pace more than Woods? This is a good start for the seventh round from the champion. Now Johnson's trying to just walk him down to the ropes, but still the challenger has not thrown a meaningful punch in this round. Now he's looking tired, John, he's just walking forward with a high guard and he's letting Kenton Woods just have free range on him. Now Woods is where Woods is doing his best work at range. I mean, you can expect Johnson to try and turn it around now because he might feel that Woods has punched himself out so slightly. Well, first 40 seconds of the round to Clinton Woods. Johnson now trying to come back into it. And honours shared for this second spell of the fight, of the round, maybe. Johnson's arms look just a little bit arm weary. There's not the same snap in the punches now. Backing Woods up onto the ropes, obviously, and trying his to get back to work but the same snap as what he had in the round previous just isn't there there's two right hands though from Johnson and follows it up with the spearing left jab as well crowd are really enjoying this one Johnson's gone into like heavy bag mode he's just imagine that Kenton Woods is a heavy bag and he's just trying for the, the single big shots and that took from Woods and covered up well as Johnson tried to respond. That's another hurtful right hand. And Woods is still taking too many of those shots for my liking. This would be a terrific performance from Woods if he could beat this man, no doubt about it. Can he keep it up? This is his best round for some time. Well, he, he needs to beat the man that's beating the man, as they say. And, you know, it's a good round for him, this one. Stop one or two big shots, as you would expect. Still a fair distance to go in this fight. Let him go, let him go. It's been one heck of an aperitif. Main course may be yet to come. The key stage and Woods has had the better of this seventh round. Last 15 seconds. It's a brawling fight, John. It certainly is. 
I always say when you have rematches, you know, you've kind of seen the fight before, we knew it was going to be close, and it certainly is once again. Anybody's fight here on, still baby, in Bolton, the IBF get light heavyweight get title get fight. Clinton Woods defending his title against the Jamaican Glenn Johnson into the eighth round. And it is maybe no more than a round between them. Woods corner telling him, go in there, jump on him. Now turn this into a war. It was at this sort of stage where Ricky Hatton really started to come on strong against Costa Zoo when he won that IBF light welterweight title fight in that memorable night at the MEN Arena in Manchester. Woods needs something of similar intensity. And here comes the big effort from Johnson. The sways, sorry, Joe, sorry. sways one way and then the other. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, Clinton Woods made a, an absolute brilliant start to this round. You know, just trying to push Johnson on the back foot, take the momentum out of his work, and Johnson just met him with the same same tactics. Those right hands from Johnson, and Woods not enough lateral movements, dropped that left hand and shipped a couple. It's really into the trenches now. These are what the months, literally months of training and preparation are for. Both men said they had had the ideal training camp for this. Now we find out. But Woods has to keep the pace going. He has to keep injecting the pace and keep it going. The punches don't have to be particularly hard. He just has to create a higher work rate and keep that working, the older man. Good work from Johnson. Woods trying to cover up well. But both of them pretty flat-footed now. Who's showing the greater urgency? The sort of punches which are going to impress the judges. That's what it's all about. I'd say Johnson looks the more tired of the two right now, John. He really does. You know, the mouth's just dropped really wide open. He's feeling the pressure of this fight. He's feeling the pace of this fight and the power of Clinton Woods' punches. Well, for what it's worth, which may or may not be a lot, if Woods wins this round, I've got it dead level. Yep, I have exactly how I've got it, John. I've got Johnson one round ahead, but he's losing this round. Now, Foster's done a pretty good job, the referee. Plenty of talking to the fighters, and it's been fought in a good spirit, this one. <laughs> Yeah, nice combination from, from Johnson there. Nice three, four punch combination. But Woods comes straight back at him. It was a good combination, Duke, but Woods managed just to slip them a little bit. He got the gloves up there. They didn't land flush. Yeah, never took it clean. Well, this is a dramatic fight, and it's still absolutely in the balance. Whatever you're thinking of doing, don't go anywhere else at the moment, because this one can go either way. Listen to the crowd. Real buzz of appreciation. There's Johnson looking very tired. Let's see what Joe Calzaghi makes of it. He's with Gabriel Clark. Joe, what do you make of it? It looks neck and neck. Yeah, it's a pretty tough fight. I think Glenn's looking uh, very tired. They're both looking tired, but Glenn looks a bit more tired at the moment. Um, you know, it's a close fight. How? how good has Clinton been? How much better has he been? He's usually fighting his usual fight, you know, but I think Glenn Johnson doesn't look mm, not as sharp as I've seen him. He seems to be loading up, you know, throwing too much uh, power in his punches, not letting the punches flow, not letting the combinations go and back them up like he should do, so, you know, he's having a hard fight. Your favouring Clinton? Maybe just at the moment, yeah. Thanks, Chuck. Yeah, okay, I don't think cheers, we'd man. argue too much with that one. It's a case of how the tide of the fight has gone, and we've got the last couple of rounds going to the champion, Clinton Woods. Four rounds still to go in this IBF light heavyweight title fight. Woods, the taller, white-skinned man in the blue and white shorts. Glenn Johnson, the Jamaican fighting out of Miami. Well, you, you find quite often with American fighters that you know, they have to travel, they, they can't quite fight the same away from home. That's not the case in Johnson, this is his normal sort of pattern, his normal kind of a fight. The urgency might not quite be there, 
but that's not down to a lack of fitness or, or desire or commitment. Uh, Woods just isn't allowing him right now to fight his normal kind of fight. Good body shot from Woods. And Johnson, my imagination, or is he arm punching a bit more, Duke? He's not setting himself and quite getting the perch. Oh, good shot. <laughs> I suppose I walked into that one and hung my chin out because he's landed two really good solid right hands there, Johnson. Well, every time he looks on Weary, oh, he's starting to fold a little bit. Oh, he's hurt Woods with that shot. Left hand from Johnson and Woods is back onto the ropes. Here comes Glenn Johnson. These are anxious times for Clinton Woods. He needs to get his gloves up. He needs to buy seconds, needs to buy time. And Johnson is gambling. He's trying to take Woods out here in the ninth round. And he's gone. he looks in very, very uncertain territory, does Clinton Woods. Bravely, he's trying to come back off the ropes. And there is still half of this round remaining, the ninth round. Woods, I think, is just starting to regain his senses. He was in very, very anxious and dangerous territory for a few seconds there. Is Johnson able to find the big shots to take him out? Oh, that was a big shot by Johnson, and it stopped Clinton Woods right in his tracks. And there's nothing coming back from the champion now. Big left left hooks. John, look at his legs, they're gone. Big left hooks from Johnson. And Woods could be seeing his title slipping away here in the ninth round. He has got to rally somehow. This is down to sheer bravery. He's got to somehow find something to repel this challenger, Glenn Johnson, who just when we thought he was tiring, has found something special. But look at that, the sheer bravery from Woods. The two land simultaneously with right hands. Nothing between them. The greater power may be from Johnson, but Johnson looks as though he's almost punched himself out in there. Yeah, he's his urgency and desperation to get Woods out. He's nearly done that, John. He's nearly put himself out, but Ken Woods has got nothing left right now. He's just been a punch. If Woods starts to throw back, he's going to leave himself open for another haymaker. Woods has got 10 seconds to survive. It's been a rocky, rocky passage. Johnson almost looked as though he had him there. And he finishes the round hard, but Woods bravely sees it through. What a round. What a big round for Glenn Johnson. And what bravery from Clinton Woods. Fantastic round from the challenger, it really was. Just when he looked like he was going into his show, he produces this. Kaboom, right on the chin. Fantastic shot. Well, I was just about to say, before he landed those shots, was it my imagination or was Johnson starting to arm punch? Nothing about arm punching there. Woods felt those shots right down to the soles of his boots. I mean, it was as much as he could do to get away, John, and he'd done a good job of surviving. Obviously, he's, he's an experienced campaigner now, knows how to survive, but you just feel that if Johnson could have just sustained this, the fight would have been over, but congratulations to Clinton Woods, he's still in the game. Nice Steve Mess. Clint, you've got to go through all the shots. Don't look down on. Get your chin up, your champion. Come on! Come on! Get in there. Well, that's the words of Richard Poxon and Dennis Hobson. Inspirational or words of desperation, I wonder. Tenth round and a huge round, the last one to Glenn Johnson. But has the exertion taken it out of him? And will that now allow Clinton Woods to find a champion's resolve? I wonder. Well, Woods will need a big round almost certainly now to stay in the fight because Johnson's going to try and march him down again. He won't throw too many shots for at least the first 30 seconds, maybe even the first minute, but you can expect him to start piling in the single shots towards the end of the round. He's just marching him down, just walking forward, trying to get Clinton to use all of the energies just by keeping out of trouble. Johnson just waiting, looking for the opportunity to land the power shots and Woods is doing the right thing, trying to use his mobility to just keep touching him with that left hand lead and maybe just picking up little shots, little punches, he clips him with a good solid left to Johnson and that was the best punch of this round so far, but it's just one against maybe ten from Woods. Yeah, but anything Johnson throws is really hurting Clinton Woods, that's the difference between the two. Here comes Johnson again. Yeah, Johnny means business, he's got the grunt on again. He's got a high guard up, he's getting grunting in now, and he's putting everything into the single shots, Is Johnson. But Woods is being applauded by Ricky Hatton and the other corner man here in front of me, and now here comes Johnson again. The crowd is trying to get Woods to raise his game. Bravery is needed now to carry him through. He keeps 
switching southpaw to try and confuse Johnson. That's not a bad tactic. Needs to hold the jab out as he walks round and then try his own right hand. I mean, he's doing quite a good job evading the big shot thus far. Johnson has not landed too much hard ladder in this 10th round so far. And we are now nearing the final minute. Maybe no more than a round or so between these two fighters at this stage, but Johnson had a big round in the ninth. Woods, though, has shown terrific determination and resolve to come back and match fire with fire here in the tent. Look at this, sheer guts from Woods. That was the loose break. Yeah, John, sorry, whoever produces the big finish wins the round for me. Absolute bravery from Woods. But now it's into or nearing the last 30 seconds, and this is where the judge's eye can be caught. Woods has done the better work in the first two and a half minutes, but now stand by for the old man act from Glenn Johnson. Will he be able to throw the power shots? Woods round so far though this, and who would have bet on that after that night? He's shown a lot of heart in this round, John. You're absolutely right. After such a bad round previously, he's really back in it again. Part of the champion. This has been a good round for Clinton Woods. Tenth round is over, and look at that. The two look into each other's eyes and are shooed off back into their corners by the referee. But that was a terrific effort from Clinton Woods, and it may have squared the fight again. We're going to take Look again at some of the action. Good right hand, that one, from Glenn Johnson. But the more punches, unquestionably, were landed by Clinton Woods. Yeah, the volume from Clinton Woods, the bigger punches from Johnson. I've got the fight dead level. I hate to fence it, John, but this is really going one round to Johnson, one round to Woods, and it's been like that for the last several. I see whoever wins the last two rounds walks away with the championship. It's all, on, to, please, all there to gain now for Clinton right, Woods. Let's listen to this jab, corner. Glenn. Just keep the jab on. That's all you got to do. Every time you double up the jab or you jab him, you knock him back. Listen to me. If you want to win this fight, put the jab on him. Get him on the ropes. They got the school. All right? Put the jab on him. And he used to be a major league baseball player in Orlando Cuellar. Certainly talks a good fight game, though. Can Johnson do what he was told? Is he able to double up the jab? Or has the tide again turned in the favour of Clinton Woods? the six foot two inch 34 year old champion from Sheffield. Well I'll tell you something, it's Woods who looks the fresher to me John, he really does. I thought he might have been out, and there, out of here in the round previous but I'll tell you what, he's really bit on that gum shield, he's using everything he's possibly got, and he's trying to keep Johnson on the back foot and nullify his work. It's good from the champion thus far again. There were a few raised eyebrows when Clinton Woods said being a champion has taken me on a level. And his corner man said, yeah, he's now got greater pride, greater desire, and he knows what he can do as a champion. He's being told off there for use of the shoulder in close by referee Howard Foster. Maybe these last two rounds could still decide this fight. It could be as close as that. Well, there's a lot more boring on, a lot more holding on now from both boxes, both are tired. But the work rate, the cleaner punches are coming from Clinton Woods. Nice uppercut, nice hook. Decent shots from Woods this, at this, in this late in the fight. What a terrific fight this is. People around here are just, some of them standing and applauding. Great right hand from Clinton Woods. And Woods, after a torrid, absolutely torrid ninth round, has come back and shown the heart of a champion. Irrespective of who wins this fight, really there is perhaps no loser. Boxing's the winner here tonight. Terrific contest. See, Johnson cannot sustain the attacks now. When he throws the attacks, it takes a lot out of him and he needs a round to recover. The final minute now of the 11th round. Could we possibly see a, a Woods Kawasaki showdown? Well, I wonder, did you want to make politically, but it would be a huge fight this side of the pond. British fans would love to see that one, but look at this, here comes Johnson again. These two men are desperately tired, and Woods beat Johnson to the puncher. He complains to the referee that Johnson used the head. 
No way though, says the referee, and the action continues. It's a tough, tough, tough fight, but Johnson looks desperately tired now. They both do, Duke. This has been a hard fight. Both of them again land simultaneously with thudding left-hand leads. It's Woods' is round, it's Woods' is round. Woods just wants this one so much. This is a huge display of champion's resolve from Clinton Woods and he has a little word with Glenn Johnson as he turned and walked back to his corner and there you can see what the crowd think of it people standing up and cheering Clinton Woods look into my eyes one round three minutes it's fucking level Clint it's level I swear to you come on come on Come on. You'll do it now, you'll be fucking best champion this country's got. Three it's minutes fair to say that they want him to have one big last round in, in the other side. All right? The winner of this round wins the fight. This guy. The winner of this round wins the fight. Emotions are Can high in both sides. Yeah. So right, much at stake here. Man. Come on. For both men, it would be a long way back from defeat it's, in this fight. It was called for a few dollars more. The prize is half a million dollars split in the champion's favour, in Clinton Wood's favour. It may still be down to this last round. Who says that boxing cannot stir emotions? Look at the reaction of the crowd here in Bolton at the Bolton Arena. Phenomenal atmosphere. Bob Wood started this round with beautiful left uppercut, John, and a right hand over the top, and he's fighting this fight absolutely brilliantly in his last few rounds. Johnson's desperately tired, but Woods is fighting with such heart, desire and passion. I wonder what the odds now on a draw. Maybe that even could be the ultimate outcome. People are thundering their applause for Clinton Woods. The road warrior, Glenn Johnson, has been on the road eight times for world title fights never once in his hometown his hometown of miami and here once again in england where he's drawn and beaten clinton woods is woods to have his revenge maybe well the clock's ticking we're going to be getting a countdown you know very shortly so you know clinton woods is winning the round for me john two minutes to go You know, he was favourite with the bookies over here in America there. Johnson is favourite. It's incredible, really. But I tell you what, if Tim Woods wins this one tonight... Well, he comes out of it with huge pride, irrespective of the result. If Clinton Woods wins this one, this is a real warrior performance from this Sheffield fighter who's not been the most fashionable man in boxing. A real, genuine, working-class boxing hero trains in the tough Gleadless estates in Sheffield used to train in Hackenthorpe with his former trainer Neil Port who was tragically stabbed to death a couple of years ago and Woods I'm sure in the back of his mind will be wanting to do this for Neil as well as for the people of Sheffield and for all those who've supported him Johnson just got a lot of heart and desire left but Woods is the one that's working his arms can he punch his way to a final victory in this round? He's got a champion, challenger in trouble. Here goes Woods, trying to raise the grandstand finish. The two of them lean on, desperately, desperately tired. But Woods is landing the greater volume of punches, the more leather. There's a good left hook and a right hand inside. And Woods is up onto his toes. His corner man are roaring him on. Good right hand from Johnson. Back comes the challenger. One final throw of the dice, maybe, from the Jamaican. I just feel that this last round's been Clinton Woods. Hasn't really put a, a punch wrong. He said a foot. Hasn't really put a punch wrong in this round. And this is the one that's going to sway the fight, I'm sure. This is the last 15 seconds of a richly dramatic fight here in Bolton. And Clinton Woods, maybe, has shown the heart to win this one. They sometimes say you've got to do a huge amount to win in a champion's backyard, but look at that, the two touch gloves, and Glenn Johnson nodded his acceptance of a phenomenal performance from Woods. Woods, for me, took the last three rounds, and that might just have been enough to do it. We will see Johnson's being chaired in the other corner. Both men think they've won this one. Maybe, who knows, a split decision. Could be a draw, even. The crowd, though, think that Woods has done enough. 
Woods thinks he's done enough, and he, for me, won that last round, Duki. Sheer determination took that one. I'll tell you what, Johnny, for me also, I think Woods has retained his championship. He boxed like a true champion, had to dig in, had to take some heavy shots, but everything that Johnson threw, he seemed to find an answer to. It's a hard one to call, but I'd be inclined to go with the champion. Well, he's going to all corners of the ring to salute his supporters in this 8,000 capacity Bolton Arena. A lot of them over on the far side of the ring from where we're commentating there. And he really does believe that he's done it. And meanwhile, Johnson is prowling around and pacing around. And his body language does not truly, to me, suspect or suggest that he, in his heart of hearts, thinks that he's done enough to win it. I wonder. They are checking up the scorer's cards now. And these are anxious times for both fighters. Master of Ceremony, Michael Pass, is the one who will deliver the verdict. It has been the sort of fight you couldn't take your eyes off. Maybe not the most silky skills of all time, but for sheer endeavour and determination and for raw aggression and will to win, they really don't come a huge amount better than that. Yeah, you wouldn't say that uh, Jen, Glenn Johnson has been hard done by if this decision goes against him, not like in their first meeting. I think Clinton Woods really has matured into a very fine world champion after this display. We're waiting for the sign that the verdict is Ladies here, and, and here it is. We have a split decision. Judge. Ricardo Bays of the United States of America scores a contest 115 to 112 for Clinton Wood.